So anyway, here we go. So the marvel of innovation. So we're going to talk about the seven superheroes that you need in any organization on any project to be successful at innovation. That's what we're going to cover off today, okay? Pablo Picasso said, every child is an artist. The real problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. They've done a lot of studies on creativity, and your peak, your peak of your creativity is when you're eight years old. So it's pretty much all downhill from here for us, okay? <laughs> so, but we're gonna, we're gonna spend some time today because finding your passion, finding your creativity and your inner artist is really essential at being successful in the world that we have going forward. I have always been obsessed about superheroes. I always dreamed of being a superhero. You know, whether it was Batman or Superman or the classic underdog, you guys probably don't even know Underdog, actually, but Underdog was amazing. Um, always dreamed of it. Some of you are probably even dreaming of being a superhero right now. You can admit it. You can admit it. All right, so here's the deal. When I was growing up, I grew up on a dairy farm in southwestern Ontario, and I always thought, how cool would it be to be a super farmer? Put on your cape, fly over the fields, bring the cows in super fast, Go into the barn with the cows, milk them super quick, be amazing. Clean up all the doo-doo that they have everywhere, super clean, super easy. That would be amazing. I thought that would be awesome. Then one day, I was walking in the barn. The cows were getting milked. My dad was working hard milking all the cows. I walked behind one particular cow. She was actually my favorite cow, Crystal. Crystal was blind in one eye. And I swear, as I walked by her, she looked back, she saw me, and she kicked me across the barn, right across the barn, at least as far as I can remember it. It was as if she had looked at me and said, Terry, it's time to rethink things. <laughs> okay, I have some strange dreams in my life, but nonetheless. So that was a moment of truth where I said, you know, maybe I'm not actually cut out to be the super farmer. It was a moment where I had to draw in within myself. I went to my dad very sadfully and regretfully and said, Dad, I don't think I'm cut out to be a super farmer. I may have to think about something else. I may have to go away to school and do something different. He looked at me. He kind of smiled. He said, Terry, your mom and I have always known you weren't going to be a farmer. Get on with it. So I went away to school to Wales to do my IB. I came back to uh, the, the, the seminal moment in my life. I came back to the University of Waterloo, did an engineering degree. Anybody got it? Warriors. Come on, you can do it. Went, went there, then uh, became a consultant, and now I'm chief innovation officer at Deloitte, a job that I love and I, and I am passionate about every day. So I've always stayed close to the superheroes, though, and so as we started to think about what the superheroes mean, we did some research on Canada. And the question is, how do we change our productivity and our innovation agenda? We looked at it and said, we can be calling complacent, fat, dumb, and happy, and just keeping going on life, or we can actually look at being captain prepared. Now, which one of these do you wanna be? Look at captain prepared, I am ready. The sad part of our research, actually, and we do very serious research, the sad part of our research is only 13% of Canadian companies are actually prepared for the kind of disruptive technologies that are coming at us, whether it's 3D printing or AI or robotics or networks and sensors. We're not ready, and we need to do some things, and hence why we have the superheroes. So here we go. Here are the superheroes that we found as we did research inside our own organization and with our clients, the super seven as we like to call them. Sadie the sensor, so she's the one out finding all the new technologies, all the new capabilities and bringing them to bear. She always is researching. I like this guy, Chameleon Connector. He's actually taking all those ideas and connecting them with the big corporations. And we'll talk about that, that role in a sec. Daya the designer, she's amazing at design. She brings the designs to life. She's always intuitive, thinking about what people are doing and what, what, what their needs are that they haven't even stated yet. Kaya, the creator, once we've designed things, we actually need to create them. There needs to be somebody bringing those new designs to life. And Brave Nouveau, this was my attempt at being French-Canadian and bilingual, so I don't know if that, was, if that was it, but Brave Nouveau is the early adopter. Didn't create the new idea, but is willing to take it out to the market for the first time and get it going. 
Marcus the mentor is amazing. He's done it all before. He's got the scars. He's been successful, but he's had lots of failures as well. And he's more than willing to share those failures with others. And then finally, Baden the big builder who commercializes and makes those ideas grow to scale. So that's our super seven. Now let's get into it and talk about them. Sadie the sensor, I love Sadie. She has an insatiable curiosity. Many of you in the room are probably Sadie sensors. You want to learn more, find out more, and TED is, of course, one of the great places to do that. She's addicted to learning. If you think about Sadie, here's the thing with Sadie. She, she is one that is always, always on tech crunch. She gets up in the morning, she reads Reddit blogs before she even has her breakfast, right? She may have even had to borrow money for education because she bought the last mini drone on Indiegogo or Kickstarter. So be careful on that. It is addictive, as my wife will tell you. Um, I spend a lot of money on Indiegogo. So Sadie Sensor is always bringing those new capabilities forward and finding them. She can be a little bit annoying, though. Um, Sorry, I'll go back here. She can be a little bit annoying because she's got so many new ideas, so many new capabilities that sometimes it's hard to keep up with. And she doesn't always bring the ideas to life. So you have to wrap, wrap some things around her. Now let's look at a, an example of sensing in life. Singularity University. Has anybody heard of Singularity University? Amazing think tank in Palo Alto. We do a lot of work with them. They have the best capabilities on all the new technologies. If you want to find out about uh, 3D printing, you go down the street and see Avi Reichenthal from 3D Systems. You want to find out about the Google self-driven car? The folks from Google and Astro Teller and their, exp and, their, uh, and their Moonshot project come over to see you. Hershey's was at Singularity. They were finding out about new things, and they wanted to create a chocolate printer for your kitchen. Think about that, chocolate printer for your kitchen. And they said, this is interesting, let's go see. And when they met Avi and the folks at 3D Systems, they said, this is amazing, we can actually do it, and they started a pilot. Two and a half years ago, this is the selfie I took. This is me, they were celebrating the 10th anniversary of Singularity. Okay, not quite a selfie, because both my hands are going, but I still... <laughs> Um, a much cooler selfie. But so I was eating the confectionery on the top of a cupcake, and that little cube was in the shape of a 3D Systems logo, and it had been 3D printed. That was two and a half years ago. For me, that was like an iPod moment. When I first saw my first iPod, I said, I can put all of my CDs, CDs, do you guys know what CDs are? Anybody knows? I could put all of my CDs on this little device. That was amazing. And for me, this was one of those moments that little piece of sugar was actually 3D printed? Are you serious? That's crazy. So where has it come since then? You can now 3D print vegetables with all kinds of cool space around them and in a much more appealing uh, aesthetic look. Or the really important device that you can print. <laughs> this is the game changer right here. And you say, oh, Terry, come on, that looks Photoshopped. Are you kidding me? Those pepperonis are too perfect. This is actually a pizza getting 3D printed by this company called Fudini. So, coming soon, I see everybody going, okay, where do I get one? We've got to have one in the dorm. I've got to have one in my townhouse. So, that's actually coming to a dorm near you. So, now let's talk, about, let's talk about Chameleon Connector. This guy is amazing. So, he is really the uber communicator. He can communicate with the startups at the hackathon, or he can communicate with the large corporates. He lives in parallel worlds. One day, jeans and a t-shirt. The next day, suits and ties. The folks in the corporates, they don't really trust him, though. And the people in the startups, they kind of think he's a bit too corporate. So, but he manages to bridge, bridge those organizations and find things where they are. Chameleon Connector, how do you know if you're a Chameleon Connector? You have way too many links in LinkedIn and friends on Facebook. Hundreds and hundreds, right? This guy, he always seems to know somebody for your problem. You're working along, and he comes by and says, hmm, it's an interesting project you got going there. You need a blockchain person for that. I know Jennifer. She is amazing at digital cryptocurrency. Everybody else in the room is going, what the hell is a blockchain? <laughs> Meanwhile, he knows three people that you should talk to that have already been there and done it. So he's amazing in, in, in that space and brings all of that capability to life. What's an example of the sensor and the connector working together? We had a, uh, one of the largest grocery companies in the world come to us, and they wanted to learn about 3D printing, about analytics, and exponential technologies. They came to us, and we said, okay, you can see it, and we can talk about it, but we have to go and live it and see it out in real life. We went to an incubator accelerator, in this instance, the Ryerson Digital Media Zone in Toronto, 
And we said, let's go through and see some of the companies that are doing this cool stuff. The chief information officer from that organization was walking down in the basement, saw one of the drone companies, and said, hey, I need to talk to these guys. Came over to talk to them and said, how big a payload can your drone carry? Can it carry two kilograms? Because if I could put a barcode reader on that drone, I could have it fly up and down our warehouse aisles and actually track my inventory. And I've got an RFID project right now that's tens of millions of dollars over budget. And if I could actually use drones at $2,000 a pop, I could save millions of dollars. So he had suddenly, they were sensing, because we were bringing them to see other organizations, but the connector had figured out how to take that cool technology and apply it to a very real world problem that they had. And that's what's going on right now. And the, the folks at DreamQI are doing some cool stuff. Let's look at the third one that's really essential in your organization, Daya Designer. I think this is the most underrated of all the superheroes. She is the one that actually brings the concepts to life, can actually take them, prototype them, pilot them, and bring them up there. She's very observant and intuitive, though. She can interview or watch you, and she understands things that you didn't even know you needed. The classic example, Steve Jobs. Did I know I needed all my 500 CDs in my pocket? No, but now that I have it, I can't live without it. She's amazing. She's, she's half architect and half psych clinical psychologist, behavioral psychologist, bringing all that to life and ma magically putting all those pieces together. She has digital built into her DNA. Everything she does is digital, and she knows how to bring it to life, not for the sake of digital, but in order to deliver better solutions. Amazing. Kyla Creator, she actually takes this uh, and, and actually brings it into the real production world. She maximizes those ideas and says, let's actually make it and, and do a pilot in production. She's always seeking discovery and challenges the norm. She's happy to do something that nobody has done before. She collaborates directly with Brave Nouveau, my French Canadian. So he's a time traveler. He can actually go into the future, bring the solutions back and bring them to life always risk-seeking and always nimble. He adjusts and adapts and is willing to take something forward. So Brave Nouveau is very important in that, in that life cycle as well. Willing to fail, something, something, by the way, that Canadians, as a populace, are not really willing to do. And the most successful innovators in the world, they fail. We need to get more comfortable with trying different things and actually failing. Not all the time, of course, but failing periodically and then bouncing back. Marcus, the mentor, is really important as well to go fast, right? He is an experienced visionary. He's done all the things before. He started up the company. He did the new capabilities, and he's more than happy to actually help others. He shares his knowledge. You can tell these guys because they love people. They love talking to them and saying, hey, here's something that we can do a little differently. Have you tried this? Have you connected with this person? And they always seem to have someone that can help you. He does, however, have very strong BS radar. I think that's okay for me to say BS, right? Um, so he can actually see when somebody is actually just trying to fluff their way through something. He's amazing. His test is, would I actually invest in that? If I wouldn't invest in it, then we need to pivot it, we need to change it, or something's not going to work. So he's amazing in terms of helping accelerate your delivery. Someone that's been there, done it before. People need to actually get Marcus to help them early on their stage because they can accelerate through the development curve. Very important to have somebody that can be your guide and your coach as you go through this. And finally, Baden the Big Builder. This guy's important. He's been building stuff from blueprints since he was born. Strong and fast, always driving things. He perseveres. Whenever a problem hits him, he's able to actually figure out what to do about it and how to change. He loves process, though. Like, this dude loves process. Why does he love process? Because process guarantees quality and consistency. And he loves quality and consistency. He's very collaborative, and he synthesizes with everybody. And the theme for today is collaboration. The combination of all these superheroes is really important on that. But Baden is the guy who builds it to scale. So it's nice to do a prototype. It's nice to do a pilot. But now we want to make it big, like some of the companies here in Kitchener-Waterloo. We want to make it large scale and repeat it. So Baden is very important in that thread. So those are our seven superheroes. One of the things that we did to try and bring this to life within Deloitte is we did a disruption by design hackathon. So we brought everybody together, looked at all the superheroes, tried to solve all the various problems, and then do it very, very quickly. As we were going through that process, we created a CEO challenge to try and take advantage of some of the new technologies. 
And one of the CEO challenges we had was around wearables. How do we tackle the mining industry? Miners every year die because either they um, are too close to where the blasting is going to happen, they get exposed to gases and they can't measure what their uh, oxygen intake and the gas intake is. And we said, what if, what if? We could actually take advantage of these really inexpensive sensors and put them on. So an oxygen sensor, a breathing sensor, a heart rate sensor, a stress and, and perspiration sensor, and a location sensor. If we could put all of those onto the miners, we could actually have a much safer environment. In six weeks, our team working out at Communitech here in Waterloo built out a prototype of that, and we're now going to be actually taking that out to some of the largest mining companies in the world. How did we do that? They leveraged everything. Sensors, they had over 20 different companies they were working with. They had um, incubators and in some, some of the startups in Waterloo that they were working with to 3D print the cases that you can see. And they had mentors that had worked in the mining industry. So all of those pieces were coming to, to scale. And now we got to go look at how do we bring that to life. So that's the superheroes. We looked at the distribution of the superheroes. All of them are important, but you don't need as many of each of them. So Sadie, we might have 5% sensors out there, 10% in the chameleons and dyas, the designers and the creators. Baden is clearly the largest. The scale guys, we need a lot of them to bring stuff to the market. And that's the set of uh, the superheroes that we have. Here's your superheroes checklist. Which superhero are you? Did you identify with any of those? Are there superheroes that you have on your team today? Are there any that you're missing that can help you bring it to life? Here's my current set of superheroes. My wife is a mentor. My son is a designer. My daughter, Nikki, who's here today, is a creator. And I'm, as you probably guessed, a censor. My counsel for you, go and find your inner artist. Think about the passion and creativity that's going to bring to life. It's really, really important. And most of all, enjoy the journey. Thanks.